That one, there was nothing quite like that, to be honest. Um, I didn't think I was going to play. So I hadn't been training with the starting 11 the entire week. But the other fullback was kind of on the move. They brought me in with the thought that he was going to get sold at some point in that January window. Um, and he'd had a bit of a calf issue. But I went in. Uh, we trained. It was match day minus one. And the gaffer called me up to his office. And I obviously, I wasn't the starting 11. He kind of names it the day before. And I go up there. And he goes, look, mate, like, it was Andrew Postacoglu at the time. He's like, look, mate, obviously the, that's my Aussie accent. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty good. So he's like, yeah, mate, you're, you're going to start. I'm going to, I'm going to put you at right back. Um, you ready for this? You know, you just came off the world cup. This will be, this will be like a duck to water. I said, all right, perfect. Like I was thinking that the other right back had came in said he couldn't play, wasn't fit or whatever. So obviously I go to the hotel then and I'm a little like, okay, a little jittery. Like this is my first match. I away. Here we go. Um, league title kind of in the bounce, big one kickstart in the second half of the year here um and yeah we go then the next morning i wake up slept pretty well which i was happy with um and we get into the to the dressing room and he announces like the lineup and no one knew that i was starting i, I thought and even the right back didn't know he thought he was <laughs> starting and all of a sudden i kind of got off i was like oh man like i gotta have a good game here now so I've, I've, this is a little bit of tension but walking out there and you are in absolutely behind enemy lines it was unbelievable the place was absolutely rocking um we went up early i remember um and just that feeling like oh crap this is a this is a proper match this like the people are fully behind it there's not a single phone out their shirts off people are jumping people are calling you every name under the <laughs> sun and you just living off of it and for me it's like look ibrox or celtic park it's you know fifty five thousand ibrox 60,000 at Celtic Park, and they're all screaming. At the end of the day, it's just noise. It doesn't matter if it's hateful to you or hateful to someone. Like, at the end of the day, I just kind of compartmentalize it as noise and just enjoy it. It's like there is 60,000 people here watching 22 guys, and I'm one of them out there just running around chasing after a ball. Um, so I kind of really enjoy that aspect of it. And again, you know, we scored an equalizer, remember that one, to make it 2 2 at the very end. And you see, we only had 750 fans away at Ibrox that match. And just what it meant to them. And then all of a sudden you just see bottles and coins and everything getting thrown <laughs> in there. You're like, oh my gosh, we might have gotten someone killed in that poor way stand. But man, like just that feeling, it was like, holy crap, that was that was a dopamine rush. And that's something that I want again and again and again. And that's what I think was really cool to start off with that, that match to understand, okay, this is what this is what a Celtic, you know, Rangers match looks like this is this is what it's all about. This is why you sign for this club and to get a decent result away at Ibrox and obviously the rest of that year to, to you know, to finish off with the treble. It was it was unbelievable, you know, to, to start my Celtic career off like that. But again, those matches, the Champions League nights, hearing the anthem, you know, it's stuff like that that honestly it gets, you know, the, the hair on the back of my neck just raised up just thinking about it. It, it really is kind of one of those experiences that it's hard to put into words um, whenever anyone asks.